once again, Silver Tip fans, and welcome to another edition of Everett Silver Tips Ringside right here on the Everett Channel. I'm your voice of the Everett Silver Tips, Travis Huntington. Good to have you back with us as the 10th anniversary season of Silver Tips Hockey is well underway, and the 2012 13 WHL campaign finds the Silver Tips looking for their 10th consecutive WHL playoff berth. And of course, a lot of fun uh, now that we're way <coughs> into the season and into the middle of it, and we're very happy to be joined here today by uh, a second year Everett Silver Tips <coughs> forward who has been an impact player since day one and uh, I'm talking about forward Cole Bommel who's here with us today and uh, of course Cole uh, thanks a lot for being with us uh, here on Silver Tips Ringside. You bet thanks for having me Trav. Well uh, of course <coughs> in your second season now with the team Cole so uh, there's been some development that's happened for you I guess on a personal level uh, and, a, and a team level as you've gone into things and, and I guess just from that standpoint coming back for a year to what's been the difference for you uh, just being that second year guy not a rookie anymore and, and maybe having having done a few things. Um, well, it's, it's definitely a little bit different uh, coming in, especially after a pretty good rookie year. It's, uh, I don't want to say I felt pressure to produce again, but you can definitely feel, especially as a vet, that um, people look to you to be a leader, a leader on the ice, off the ice, doesn't really matter where it is. People expect you to lead by example with your work ethic, stuff like that, but uh, it's, I felt it's gone pretty good so far in my second year. Well, I guess from an expectation standpoint, there is a, a, a pretty big difference there in that way. And everybody comes in as a rookie and you're kind of maybe allowed some leeway for, uh, you know, that, that adjustment period and learning the game in the Western Hockey League level, which, of course, is a pretty big jump uh, coming from the midget level like most guys do. And, uh, and I guess for you coming in as a second-year guy instead of, okay, what is, what is this cool bomb all about? Now this year it's more of like, okay, Cole Baumel did a great job last year and, and we look for him to up the ante almost. Did, did you feel like that way? It was a, maybe a little bit of pressure in that standpoint? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but yeah, you definitely feel a little bit of a pressure coming back, especially after I did have a pretty successful rookie year. Um, uh, I got away a little bit from my game at the start of the year. I wasn't playing like I did last year and I, lately I've felt I've been getting back to it, but yeah, you definitely... You definitely feel a bit more eyes on you, I guess, from the coaches. They expect you. They don't give you as much leeway. They they expect you to do the right thing at the right time, sort of thing. They don't they don't have the the leeway for you anymore. When you say that maybe early in the season you felt like you, you got away from your game a little bit there. What what are some things that you felt like maybe now looking back on the first you know month or two of the season? What what did you feel like maybe you weren't doing? Um, I wasn't using my, I wasn't just playing my game. I wasn't using my speed as well. I was sitting back more. I wasn't uh, forechecking. That's what I made my living on last year was being a pest and trying to get on other teams' defensemen. And usually they're pretty big, so I would just try and bite at their ankles usually and just chop at them. But uh, I don't know. I just got a, I played too much of a cute game at the start of the year. I think uh, I just got away from what made me successful last year all through my career so far. And I think that uh, the last couple games here I've been getting back to it and uh, starting to see a bit of results now. Well and for a guy such as yourself uh, you, the way you play the game so much has to do with it It seems like you have pretty good instincts and you try to think the game pretty well out there and of course different guys have different ways different styles and, and for you it seems like that that probably helps you out there I would think and just just thinking through and, and the way you use your head. To play. Yeah I, I don't have the physical attributes to be a big bruiser out there so I got to use my head whenever I can uh, Having some hockey smarts that definitely helps me out a bit. Um, combining that with my speed that makes up for my lack of size, I'd like to say. <laughs> well, there's other things, of course, being a second-year guy that, that change for you. And, I, and you talk about a little bit of the locker room standpoint, maybe, and, and being a guy who now is, is offering advice to some younger players or, or some of the rookies on this team or, or kind of showing guys a thing or two out there. Do, are you into that yet, or is it still a little early for you? No, I try to do that. I, even last year, whenever an older guy would... Uh, give me a little bit of advice, I'd always take it in. It always felt good knowing that somebody actually cared and they were trying to help you out. And even if you made a mistake, uh, they told you what to do better, or if you did something good and they gave you a pat on the back. Uh, it definitely helps with the transition period uh, for young guys. It makes them feel part of the team and mm -hmm. like some people actually care about them and they're not just there just for just to play hockey. They're actually there because people care about them. Is that something that you kind of embrace? I mean, from a personality standpoint, I mean, obviously you're, you're a pretty outgoing guy and, and in the locker room there is, as young guys are probably in their shell a little bit, you know, to start the season. I mean, is that a role that, that you think that, that you enjoy playing a little bit in terms of helping guys along and maybe yeah. helping to make things more comfortable? Yeah, I try to be. I'm not a very serious guy. I like to joke around with, <laughs> in the locker room. Uh, some people 
especially before games, some people are sitting there, head down, music in, just not saying a word. I like to keep it loose, uh, trying to talk to people as much as possible, just that they, uh, I don't know, keep it, keep it uh, loose in the dressing room, I guess, and so that everyone's not so tense and tight for games and even for practices, too. It makes a good mood for the games. Well, and I know, you know, as a team, obviously, uh, the wins haven't come in the first part of the season, maybe as much as you might like. But in terms of the growth that seems to be happening right now with the team, I mean, it really feels like watching the games and seeing you guys as a group that, that it is happening and that already guys are coming along and rookies are maybe even more comfortable and, and second-year guys, the veteran guys, are, are even coming along as well. Do you guys feel as a group like that's happening? Oh, yeah, you can definitely tell that we're growing as a team. Like, at the start of the year, we had a lot of young guys, a lot of new faces coming in, so we were still, it was a transition period for everyone, not just the rookies, it was the vets as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you can tell lately that we're starting to gel as a team, uh, and the rookies there, young guys there, are starting to really pull up the slack. They're playing really well lately, and they're helping us old guys, and us old guys are trying to help the young guys as much as possible. Us old guys? Didn't you just turn 18? 18, yeah. I Those guess I shouldn't guys. be saying old guys. Veteran <laughs> players will say I'm still young. <laughs> you are still young, but, uh, but, but in terms of being you know, one of the more veteran guys on the team in some ways now, and that you know, a normal second-year player might not even have as much experience under his belt as you've got. Uh, I mean, obviously, right from the hop of your rookie season, you were getting important minutes, and, and you were playing in a lot of situations. You were on the penalty kill and on the power play, and, and a lot of guys don't get that opportunity right, you know, right off the beginning mm -hmm. of their career. Do you feel like maybe uh, y your development process has come along a little more because of that? Oh, for sure, yeah. It always helps when you get to play big minutes uh, when you're young. It gets your... You get, Gives you more experience, that's for sure. And uh, I know I got a little lucky last year. We had a couple of injuries at the start of the year, so I got p bumped up in the lineup a couple of times. And whenever I got my chance, I just tried to make the most of it. And lucky enough, it worked out for me. Well, and you talk about uh, a rookie season in which you, you finished with Silver Tips Rookie of the Year award. You had almost 40 points, and and, and in terms of that. Uh, that success that you had right at the beginning of the season, were you expecting that? Uh, was it unexpected? What was uh, what was your feeling by the end of the year about? wow, uh, this was better than I thought it would be, or I was about to say? Oh, it was definitely better than I thought it would be. Uh, at the start of the year, I was just kind of coming in there at, the, at, at training camp. I was coming in just hoping to make the team. Yeah. I was hoping to be a fourth-line guy, maybe hopefully get onto the third line at some point. Uh, by the end of the year, though, I ended up playing on the second line with uh, Harrison and Fowley there for almost the entire second half, and mm -hmm. we had some good chemistry. And by the end of the year, I'd say... I don't want to, I'd say I expected myself to be playing as good as I, I, I was, I guess, because um, I know I could at the same point. At the start of the year, I was still kind of like, oh, still a little nervous, didn't want to be making mistakes, still kind of getting used to it. But by the end of the year, I was more comfortable with myself and the league, so I was starting to expect a bit more of myself. Well, it's been, uh, it's been fun so far for you, and obviously here uh, in your second season, there's a whole lot more to come, and uh, we've actually got a lot more to come as well here on Everett Silver Tips Ringside. Right now, we're going to get a quick timeout, but we've got a lot more with Cole Ball coming up right after this break, right here on Everett Silver Tips Ringside. At Everett Community College, you can stay close and go far. For me, going far is faculty who really care about me. Going far is becoming the first in my family to go to college. Going far is taking the first step toward my dream job. Going far is going to college without going broke. At Everett Community College, you can stay close and go far. Back here once again on Everett Silver Tips Ringside here on the Everett Channel. I'm Travis Huntington, your voice of the Everett Silver Tips. Good to have you with us uh, once again here on the program as we're visiting with second year Everett Silver Tips forward Cole Bommel. And uh, obviously Cole talking a little bit in that first segment about uh, your career and the development process coming in as a, as a second year guy on the team now. And, uh, you know, I guess as you look back maybe to being younger, uh, your dreams of playing the Western Hockey League and, and, and increasing your prospects of a hockey career there. When did you feel like that was really a, a legitimate reality for you? I mean, the, the Bantam draft comes mm -hmm. around there, and of course uh, your name gets called by the Everett Silver Tips. Was it before that or not until after? When did you feel like, you know what, I, I have a shot to play in the WHL? It probably wouldn't have been till the start of my midget year, actually, because uh, to be honest, I didn't know what the Bantam draft was <laughs> until in my first year Bantam, my buddy on my team had actually gotten picked to Medicine Hat Tigers, and before that, I had not a clue what the Bantam draft was, and I was, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get drafted at all. I didn't think I was even in the running, 
then draft day came and I was I had a really I had a pretty good uh, bantam draft year mm -hmm. and um, I I was still on the fence. It was 50-50. I was like, was I going to get drafted? Because I wasn't the biggest guy, and I'm still not. <laughs> but uh, And I th thought maybe that might have played into the factor a bit. But uh, I think uh, my midget year is when I started to realize that, hey, I might have a shot at this. But I still wasn't 100% sure. Still, there's a lot of players out there that could have taken my spot just as easily. So I don't know. I, st I never really got comfortable with the fact that this was a legit shot or mm -hmm. a chance for me. But um, I'd say in my midget years, that's when I started to think it was a possibility. Well, and growing up uh, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, obviously right there in the heart of, of WHL country, the Saskatoon Blades, uh, one of the oldest franchises in the league. And I would have to think that uh, growing up in that city, the, the WHL is probably a pretty big deal. Was that something that you always dreamed about as a kid, even when you were younger? Maybe you went to Blades games thinking about that? Or? Yeah, me and my one buddy down the street that I lived uh, lived on, we'd, uh, we'd go to a Blades game usually once a week. We'd try to go. He, he was a big hockey fan, just like me. And... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, the Blades weren't real successful in the years I was growing up. They had some pretty <laughs> average teams, so I think that kind of killed the, the WHL vibe in the town. But mm -hmm. um, especially in uh, when would have been the year before I came down to Everett, uh, I went, me and my buddy, uh, we went to quite a few games just because we knew that there was a possibility we'd be in this league next year. So we wanted to try and feel it out a bit, see what the players were like, what their tendencies were, just mm -hmm. seeing what made them successful. But uh, I can't say that I was a real big Blades fan growing up, just because they were never that successful, I guess. But uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it was. We went to a couple of Blades games growing up, but it was always fun. Well, and you know, Cole, as you, of course, were were looking, I suppose, being a young man playing this game and and getting better, and maybe you start to get noticed a little bit. But like you said, you were. You know, a smaller guy who maybe has always had to work a little more. Uh, you know, when, when you get a big guy who's I got eye popping skill, I'm not going to say that it gets handed to them, but it's a little easier to get noticed when oh, you're that guy. For sure, yeah. When you're the small guy that that has to go out there, I mean, you really have to work a little extra hard. You have to be a little smarter. You have to be a little bit sharper than everybody else to separate yourself. Do you feel like that has helped you become the player that you are? Definitely, yeah. That's, that's basically what I try and revolve my game around is being smart out there. Like I said before, I, I don't have the size to be a big bruising, just power my way through people. I gotta find holes and just use my head when I can. Is there a mindset that comes along with that as, as being one of the, you know, the quote unquote little guys out there on the ice? Um, not really. I don't know. I try. I, my whole life I've kind of flown under the radar with, cause, just because of my size. Yeah. So and I, I actually like that uh, role coming in kind of being unnoticed and then kind of popping up whenever mm -hmm. whenever I can. But uh, being one of the little guys, like you said, it's, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's not the best way to be uh, be called. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, I've embraced it. Uh, I know I'm not going to be a 6'2 guy anytime soon, so yeah. just got to live with what I got. Well, and now that uh, here we, we are in your second year as a Western Hockey Leaguer, and again, we talked about a, sex, a successful rookie season, and here in your second year now, you're also uh, draft eligible for the National Hockey League, and I know that that's something a lot of guys look forward to that season. I mean, from your standpoint, uh, judging by the rookie season that you had and, and the way you've been able to adapt to the WHL game, being a, a solid contributor on this team, is that something that you're, you're thinking about at all, uh, you know, hoping that that maybe happens for you, or, or are you trying not to worry about it? Well, everyone hopes that they hear their name on draft day, but I'm trying not to think about it. All those distractions are never good for anyone. All the, if you look on, online and you see something you don't like, maybe you'll get discouraged or something. So yeah. I, I try to stay away from that as much as possible. Uh, I got a couple of buddies that have been drafted last year. Um, uh, they talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I got to talk about it with them last year. But I, I try to stay away from it as much as possible just because <laughs> you, never, you never know. Something yeah. could happen, could not. You don't want to get your hopes up too high. Well, and I know in terms of uh, handling what you can control as an individual, I know you're focused on this hockey season. And, and for this Silver Tips team, as we approach already the midway point of the season, hard to believe that we're almost there. But... Uh, the, what this uh, team has done so far this season, some of the strides that you've made, uh, what do you feel like this team's capable of here down the stretch as you, as you get going in the second half? And obviously there's a lot of hockey left to be played here, but do you feel good about the prospects of this team going forward? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, considering we've had so many injuries right now, I still think we're playing pretty good. And once we get our full lineup back in, uh, we got to think Harrison is our only one left. Mm -hmm. But even adding him into the lineup, you'll we'll definitely see a big in increase in uh, production. So I think I think we got the potential to do some damage. Uh, we 
if we play simple, we can compete with any team. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we can pull it all together in the second half, and um, I think we can get to the playoffs for sure. Maybe make some noise. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, Cole. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of hockey left to play this season. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, of course, we look forward to watching you out there as well. Thanks a lot for being with us, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, hopefully again here soon on Silver Tips Ringside. You bet. Thanks a lot, Jeff. All right. Well, that is Silver Tips forward Cole Bommel here on this edition of Everett Silver Tips Ringside. We thank you uh, for watching. Don't forget the Silver Tips throughout December at our home games prior to Christmas. We'll be running the Christmas House Holiday Drive. So when you come to each Silver Tips home game, you can donate uh, toys or even cash, stuffed animals or what have you to help uh, lower income families right here in our area. Of course, uh, following Pink the Rink, we've also had the Movember mustaches going on throughout the month of November. And now in December, we've got the Christmas House holiday drive as well that you can get involved with. Thanks a lot to Cole Bommel and uh, thank you very much for watching this edition of Everett Silvertips Ringside right here on the Everett Channel.